Okay. Good morning and welcome to Going to Work with Gina, which is an inspiration for STEM students. I am Dr. Gina Henderson, and I have a treat for you students today. I have with me Disney Dreamer, Maya Mitchell, and I have Joshua Dobbs of the NFL, a quarterback from Pittsburgh Steelers. And today, Maya is going to interview Josh because her and Josh have something in common, although they are at different levels in their life. Remember what I always tell you students, you always got to be ready. So to this, today, she's going to interview Josh because Josh wants to be an astronaut and Maya wants to be an astronaut. And so, Josh, today, Maya has a few questions that she would like to um, discuss with you interview style. Awesome. All right, Maya, let's see what you got for him. Okay. Hi, Josh. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Nice to meet you as well, Maya. Having me on. It's so cool. All right, so I'm gonna get started. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's freezing a little bit, but I can get there still. Okay. So my first question is, what about being an astronaut interests you? I think um, there's several things about being an astronaut, from you know the adventure to the thrill to the teamwork that's involved in being an astronaut, which plays a lot into my background playing football and sports growing up to even, you know, just continuing to learn about engineering concepts and actually apply them um, in a very extreme scenarios, of course. Um, so and to also just um, to be an astronaut is always something I feel like, you know, everyone in the engineering world, especially if you love space, you love aviation, you love aerospace, you know, you always see the astronauts and they, they seem like they're the top of the industry. So I think, you know, those are three reasons, throw three affinities that, that I've grown to have an interest in becoming an astronaut and then being able to go down to spend Kennedy Space Center, excuse me, and meet several astronauts from when I was seven and I didn't know anything. I just knew what a rocket was to now after finishing school and understanding all the engineering concepts and spending time at NASA. Um, it, it's, it's a pretty cool aspiration and dream to have, and uh, maybe someday we'll be able to attain it. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, how long have you had this dream of becoming an astronaut? <laughs> Well, that's a wonderful question. I think I remember when I was seven, um, I went down to Kennedy Space Center um, and that was 2002, kind of dating me. Um, but that was, you know, <laughs> if, if you think about, you know, peak, um, the peak space program, you know, that kind of, and I guess in my eyes, in my lifetime, that was the time, you know, that was when the shuttles were taking off three to four times a year. Um, people were, you know, taking, you know, their family vacations, not to the Bahamas, not to Mexico, but to Kennedy Space Center and Space Coast to see a shuttle launch. And, you know, we didn't see a launch then, but we were able to go down and spend a couple of days at the Space Center and uh, be able to meet some of the, the current astronauts at that time. And then to be able to understand the history, you know, and go and see some of the Apollo rockets and the old launch sites where they began testing rockets um back in like the gemini project so you know it was a lot of history as long as well as being able to see people actually uh, see the goal making it very tangible and i think that that's kind of you know i guess where it all began and that's you know of course being an astronaut um as i said i think that's a, a lot of engineers goals but just you know the the background and the um groundwork to wanting to be an engineer and wanting to spend time in NASA and wanting to learn more about aerospace and aviation, you know, that's where it all began, you know, just on that one trip down to Kennedy Space Center. Well, I think that's cool that we both have something else in common. We both wanted to be astronauts pretty young. I think that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, my next question is, how do you think your football career has prepared you, if at all, to become a successful astronaut? I think, you know, the main things that I think I've, that how they correlate between being an astronaut and a football player is first, of course, the teamwork. You know, it takes a lot of, you know, manpower to be able to just, you know, put together the rocket to send it up without, you know, human beings on it. And then now, you know, you add a human's life to that. And now someone's actually controlling the rocket from the cockpit. You know, I think the teamwork is crucial. 
And then once you get to your destination to be able to perform your tasks and, and make it home safely, um, there's a lot of teamwork involved. And of course, in sports, you know, teamwork's the name of the game, especially in football, um, the sport that I play. So I think that's the first thing. And then also, I think, you know, the amount of hard work and dedication that you have to put into your craft. You know, it's, you know, the practice or the preparation um, leading up to your launches that are going to make or break and make it a successful launch. You know, of course, you know, on my scale now as a NFL quarterback, you know, the, the mistakes you make aren't life and death uh, for us. You know, it might be wins and losses, but, you know, it's not life or death. I think when you put it on the engineering scale, it's, it's much bigger. Um, so I think, you know, the preparation that's le that leads up the, type, the, the amount of time you have to spend into it, the amount of dedication you have to have in your craft, and the attention to detail that you have to have, you know, just as a quarterback and a football player are the exact same, um, the exact same traits that you have to have uh, to be a successful astronaut and a successful engineer. I think that's how they correlate. That's how they tie together. So the habits that you create now will help you out in the end. That was a good answer. <laughs> okay, my next question is, how does it feel to be an inspiration to anyone who has an interest, who has an interest both in STEM and professional sports while you're showing it's possible to do both? Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, my goal, of course, is obviously to be successful, a successful engineer and to be a successful professional athlete. And that's where it starts. And coming with that becomes comes a platform, you know, <clears throat> an opportunity to share your story with the youth and to inspire the youth. You know, my goal is for the next whoever it may be, my individual out there who wants to be an astronaut, who's also good at you know other things outside of just engineering and wants to do Whatever passions that she has, he has at a high level, at the highest level to be exact, um, that you can do it. If you're willing to work hard enough, um, you're willing to dedicate yourself to your craft, you're willing to sacrifice, you know, now to help out your future. Um, if you're willing to do mainly those three things and, and outwork your competition, um, then you can set high goals and work hard each day to, to achieve them. Right. I like that answer. <laughs> My next question, how has COVID affected your journey to becoming an astronaut and your current NFL career? You know, I think anyone in the, in, in the world would say COVID's kind of put a damper on things, not a damper, but just a change of pace. You know, when it first occurred, whether it was, you know, stuff I wanted to do in the engineering world, such as go down and see, you know, the Dragon launch, the first crew launch last year, um, you know, you have to go down, make sure, you were tested, healthy. Um, you know, there's a lot of regulations to get there. You know, in the football world, we had a whole off season of workouts canceled and a season that was full of new stipulation rules and regulations. So, um, but I think with anything, you know, the best are able to adapt to their environments. The best are able to not look at those, you know, um, look at those new restrictions and changes as an excuse to not continue to work hard, not continue to achieve their dreams, but they're able to overcome them and adjust how they operate and move. So for me, that's exactly what I did. You know, I just had to make modifications to my schedule, whether that was, you know, finding new ways to work out, social distance, get in touch with my teammates, prepare for uh, a season, or even, you know, now doing a virtual NASA internship instead of being in person as I was last year. So it just takes a little, um, it just takes a little open-minded, some thought, you know, being able to adapt. And from there, um, you'll still be able to accomplish your goals. You just got to be fluid with, with, the, with the current environment. Wow. <laughs> That's all right. Adversity. My next question. Do you think your transition from one incredibly demanding to... Do you think your transition from one incredibly demanding career to another will go smoothly? I, I, I think uh, smoothly, I think that's an interesting term. You know, I think um, there's <laughs> going to be, as you said, you know, adversity is everywhere. So there, there's going to be some adversity. I think it's all about how you handle it. So, you know, smoothly to me might not be smoothly to someone else, just because mm -hmm. I just think what I've been through, um, you know, just the work I've put into both crafts, you know, growing up, um, you know, I think it, anything will be smooth because I'm willing to work hard enough to overcome whatever adversity obstacles will be put in my path. 
to get to where I want to go. So, you know, whether that's smooth for uh, someone else, um, that that's going to have to be their opinion. But at the end of the day, you know, as I said, you know, if you work hard enough, you dedicate yourself to your craft, if you're committed to what you want to achieve, then whether it's smooth or not, at the end of the day, you know, you just want, you have to attain that goal, no matter what it takes to get there. So I'm not really worried about, you know, how, how small or large the speed bump will be when I come across it. You know, I'm just worried about getting over it. Okay. <laughs> My next question, how does it feel to follow in the footsteps of Leland Melvin and show the leaders of tomorrow that if they have a love for science and football, they can do it both in their lifetime? Uh, it is very exciting. Um, you know, just following his story and, and seeing the success he had as a football player. And then, of course, now as an astronaut, I think the biggest, the, the, the most impactful thing for me to see is, you know, just how he in, in, inspires the youth. Um, the, especially, you know, the African American youth, where we don't always see people, you know, that look like us in those positions as an astronaut, as a lead engineer, you know, as at the top levels and ranks of NASA. So to see how far he's come and how he continues to inspire and empower the youth um, is definitely very powerful. And so um, I think no matter who you are, you know, you have to remember that it took a village to get you get you to where you are. Um, so while you have the platform and, and while you have the knowledge, take an opportunity to give back to the next generation. Um, so as he is doing currently, I strive to be the same uh, role model that he's been and, and make the same impact that he's currently doing. So I'll continue to look for ways to do that. Um, but it's very humbling, you know, to, to be uh, to be viewed as a role model and looked up to because, you know, when I sat on the journey, I never really said, you know, I want to be a role model. I just said, you know, I just want to work hard and and uh, achieve my goals. So um, for people to say, you know, I look up to him um, is humbling. And, you know, I hope I'm, I'm able to empower them to when they are where I am, they're able to say the same thing. Oh, it's humbling for someone to look up to me. So now let me give back to the next generation. I felt that last part. It is humbling. Like yeah. after Disney Dreamers, people are like, "Oh my gosh, am I like you're so inspired?" I was like, "Wow, that's crazy." Yeah, <laughs> okay, you're like, so. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but thank you, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Okay, my last question: How did you find time to do all of this and extra with NASA and advance your football career? Um, I think uh, time's all relative. Um, if you're if you're if you have enough. Um, discipline and time management skills, and no matter you know how big of a chunk you try to bite off, you'll you'll be able to get it all done. Um, you know, I learned at a young age. I grew I grew up playing football, baseball, basketball, while also participating in several STEM events, uh, chess clubs, chorus band, whatever you name it. I probably my name was uh, in the yearbook photo next to that club. Um, so growing up doing all that, I learned how to manage my time at a young age and create those habits. And then when I got to college and you're on a scale where you know, it's no longer your parents telling you when to study and how to study. It's you actually having to carve out the time and create those habits and discipline to be successful. I think during those four years really helped uh, create you know the platform for the rest of my life and in, in understanding how to manage my time, how to make the most of my time, utilize my time. So, um, you know, if you if you have enough time, if you have the right mindset, focus, the right discipline, I think that's the big word. It takes a lot of discipline. You know, there's a lot of times when you just want to go home and lay down, go home and hop on the video game or go home and just stare at a wall uh, when you have you know, a lot of stuff to do. And of course, there's times where you just need to do that. You just need to rest and relax and get your mind right. But there's also times when you turn it on and dive into your work. Um, so. Understanding that discipline, I think that's the big key. So being able to create that discipline when I was younger has helped me even now on managing my time and uh, will continue to help me moving forward. Well, that's all my questions. <laughs> Thank you. This has been great. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Maya. I appreciate you. Keep working hard and hopefully, hopefully maybe we'll be on, the, on one of the next missions, maybe to the moon or something coming up in the next couple of years. So hopefully we'll, Mars. We'll, <laughs> Hopefully Mars, how about that? As long as they get us back, then then, yes. then then we can go.
Well, I just wanted you two to know that you're such an inspiration because you're at your game, you know, and you're thinking about becoming into a larger game as being an astronaut. And one thing I've always been telling Maya is that there's no cookie cutter recipe for becoming an astronaut. Josh, as you probably already know, with you meeting all of the different astronauts, because I saw it was so cool, too, when you get actually, um, I don't know if it was virtual, or you actually came on center and um, General Bolden was there. Um, mm -hmm. Charlie Bolden. And so yeah. I was like, OK, so, you know, you're meeting you're meeting the great of the greats, you know. And so um, it's just an inspiration to see you all at your diff different levels in life. Her being a high school student, you already graduated from college, being a professional in the NFL and, you know, still having goals and aspirations and dreams. So, Josh, what I want to ask you is that I like that cap you got on. Can, so can you tell me what that's all about? Yeah, of course. So this is actually my uh, personal cap. Um, it's called Astro Brand. It's a brand I actually created within the last year. And so kind of uh, when I was at school, like a nickname, big nickname I had across campus, like Astro. My last name is Dobbs. So it's like Astro Jobs. So I try to tie in, you know, my love and affinity for space with um, football um, and everything that I'm interested in. So I created this hat. I got some shirts coming out. Um, but yeah, I'd love to, love to sing, maybe sing, sing you a hat. Um, oh, yeah. There. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would love a hat. But, you know, what's so significant about Astro, that was my first mission when I came <laughs> into NASA, uh -huh, Astro 1. And so um, that was the payload that I was assigned to with the Russians. And okay. so, wow. yeah. Yeah. So that's why I was like, Astro, okay. <laughs> That means a lot of great things. So I want to thank both you and Maya. Maya from a Disney Dreamer standpoint, uh, Josh from the NFL standpoint, and for both of you for your love of aerospace and want to be our next, our future generation of astronauts. I want to thank you both for going to work with Gina this morning. And students, remember, we can do anything as long as we prepare. So I want to thank you for going to work with Gina this morning. If there's any commercials that you miss, please don't hesitate to go to YouTube, go on to work with Gina. Thank you.